dear students welcome back in the previous session we have finished the axis of motion of the elbow joint now in this session we are going to see the carrying angle of the elbow when the upper extremity is in anatomical position that is the shoulder is in external rotation elbow is in extension and the forearm is fully supinated so this is the anatomical position of the upper extremity here the long axis of the humerus here you can see here this is the long axis of the humerus and the long axis of the forearm and the long axis of the forearm forms an acute angle medially when they meet at the elbow so this forms an acute angle medially when they meet at the elbow so this is the longitudinal axis of the humerus and for the forearm this is the longitudinal axis here when you extend this um, longitudinal axis of the shoulder so it forms an acute angle on the medial aspect of the elbow okay the angulation in the frontal plane so this is the frontal plane the thing the peaks we are seeing here the angulation in the frontal plane is caused by the configuration of the articulating surfaces at the humero ulnar joint so this angulation is formed due to the articulating configuration of the articulating surfaces of the humero ulnar joint so now we will see this um, configuration how which forms such a kind of angulation here the medial aspect of the trochlea so the trochlea which is a pulley shaped uh, structure in that the medial aspect of the trochlea extends more distally than the lateral aspect which shifts the medial aspect of the ulna trochlear notch more distally and results in the lateral deviation so because of this trochlea which is um, uh, present like this so th so this one at the medial aspect of the um, trochlea which is extend more distally than that of the lateral so because of this um, uh, medial aspect of the ulna the trochlear notch is placed more distally and uh, results in uh, lateral deviation this lateral deviation is called as valgus angulation this lateral medial um the lateral deviation which caused by this trochlea is called as valgus angulation so if you can see the lateral deviation is for the forearm not at the uh, medial aspect so the forearm is appear to be deviated laterally but the angulation is present towards the body so it is called as valgus angulation valgus where you get this term as valgus that means towards the body so towards the trunk towards the midline so this angulation we can see here is the towards the body so whenever if the angulation is present for example if you can see on the lateral aspect the angulation if you can see then it is called as varus varus angulation because the angulation is formed away from the body okay so this is called as valgus angulation so which results in the lateral deviation of the ulna in relation to the humerus so in relation to the humerus the ulna is deviated laterally 
okay so the normal valgus angulation this is a normal thing the normal valgus angulation is called as carrying angle or cubitus valgus what is this angulation called as the normal valgus angulation is called the carrying angle or cubitus valgus cubitus means elbow and at the medial aspect of the elbow it is having an angulation that is called as valgus angulation so the normal valgus angulation is called as carrying angle or cubitus valgus okay so this is about the carrying angle of the elbow how this angle is formed okay functional use of the carrying angle results from a combination of shoulder lateral rotation elbow extension and forearm supination which enables a person to carry a bucket in in one hand in such a manner as to avoid contact with the body so because of this position if a person is carrying any weights or something so the bucket will not touch the body on the same side so this angulation makes the weight to keep away from the body okay so because of such position it enables a person to carry a bucket in one hand in such a manner as to avoid contact between the carried load to the lower limb on the same side and also this position also helps in leading the hand towards a position above the center of mass center of mass of weight okay and uh, some of the interesting things how this carrying angle is formed when after birth um how this angle is increased uh, in which gender this angle is more now we will see some of the studies which are uh, done by some investigators found that in the first year of life there is no difference in the carrying angle between the males and females however the mean carrying angles have been found to be significantly larger in female children than in male children in the same age group so they have found that in the same age group of both the female and male children the female children will have more carrying angle than that of the male children group but during the first year of life there is no that much difference in the carrying angle between the males and females and they have uh, studied uh, in so many groups where the carrying or angle is uh, varied okay so an overall increase in the carrying angle and considerable amount of variability in the angle occurs up to age 14 or 15 up to 14 or 15 years of age um this increasing of the carrying angle is maximum so this increase of carrying angle corresponds to the age of epiphysis closure around the elbow after age 15 the angle appears to decrease slightly but shows less variability the angle in full elbow extension is generally about 15 degrees but may vary from about 8 to 15 degrees and some other uh, investigators found a slight but significant difference in the carrying angle between dominant hand and non dominant um, hand so 
if some people are right handed people and some are left handed people so the people who are right handed they are um, right dominant they have right dominant arms whereas uh, some people who are having um, left handed so those people are called as left dominant um, arms so in the case of uh, dominant and non dominant arm an increase in the carrying angle that is uh, valgus beyond the average is seen so an increase in the carrying angle is seen in the dominant arm when compared to the non dominant arm so if the increase of carrying angle beyond its um normal angle then it is called as abnormal um carrying angle so that abnormal carrying angle have um, some uh, different names called as cubitus valgus and cubitus varus so now we will see what is the normal uh angle carrying angle now we will see again here so here these are the uh, normal carrying angle seen in males and females normally in males it is 5 degrees whereas in the females 10 to 15 degrees of normal carrying angle is present so how the angle is calculated so a longitudinal axis of the shaft and the longitudinal axis of the forearm which will meet at one point on the medial aspect of the uh, elbow forms an acute angle here so when we extend this long um, uh, axis of the humerus it forms an angle here so this how much angle if it is 5 degrees in males it is normal in females it is 10 to 15 degrees then it is normal so in males if it is more than 5 degrees it is abnormal for males if it is more than 15 degrees in females it is abnormal for females or if the carrying angle is less than 5 degrees then it is also abnormal carrying angle in males and in females if it is less than 10 degrees then it is abnormal carrying angle in females how can we identify this abnormality so by calculating this carrying angle we can find the abnormality of the carrying angle so here you can see uh, the different types so this one is the normal carrying angle so if you can see this one this is the longitudinal axis of the shaft and the forearm then if it cuts here and it is forming within the range that is uh, 5 degrees in males and 10 to 15 degrees in females then it is normal okay so if the variation of angle which is more than 15 degrees so here you can see this one is more than 15 degrees so the more deviation from medial aspect more deviation of the ulna you can see here more deviation of the ulna with respect to humerus and this angulation is more so that means this is called as cubitus valgus cubitus valgus that means the elbow is more towards the body the medial aspect and this forearm is away so it is called as cubitus valgus so if the angulation is less than 5 degrees then it is called cubitus varus so here you can see this upper extremity is almost straight in this condition in this case so if you if you measure this carrying angle of this upper extremity here you can't see this uh, valgus angle here so it is um, there is no much deviation of this 
alna with respect to the humerus then it is called as cubitus varus so this here uh, in this the elbow is almost the medial aspect is almost facing towards the body but here the medial aspect is far away from the midline from the body here so this is called as cubitus varus and this one is the normal carrying angle and this one is the cubitus valgus these two are the abnormal carrying angles leading to conditions called as cubitus valgus and cubitus varus okay so this is about uh, the abnormality of the carrying angle in normal uh, movements when this carrying angle is going to disappear okay so in normal uh, movement of this elbow that is a flexion and during flexion and extension also along with forearm movements this carrying angle will disappears in a normal functions also so what are those um, conditions where this um, carrying angle uh, disappears during uh, different kinds of different kinds or different ranges of motion of flexion and extension we will see that one here so here the position of forearm in passive flexion so in such kind um, when we do some flexion of the elbow passively so in some in certain cases this carrying angle uh, will disappears okay when uh, this carrying angle is going to disappear normally the carrying angle disappears when forearm is pronated when the forearm is pronated and the elbow is in full extension and when the supinated forearm is flexed when the supinated forearm is flexed again as the humerus in full elbow flexion so in these two cases the carrying angle disappears in the anatomical position what is the position so the shoulder is uh, externally rotated elbow extended and the forearm is supinated in that condition we can see the angle carrying angle so in the same position what will happen so if the forearm is pronated and the elbow is in full extension so elbow is in full extension when it is pronated then this carrying angle disappears and also when the supinated forearm flexed against uh the humerus that is uh, full flexion of the elbow so in that condition also the carrying angle disappears okay some of the studies um, done by van roy uh, he found statistically significant differences in the mean carrying angles in men and women from 0 to 30 degrees of flexion so from 0 to 30 degrees of flexion there is a major variation of uh, this uh, disappearance of the carrying angle is seen when the carrying angle disappear at flexion angles beyond 30 degrees beyond 30 degrees we can't see the carrying angle properly so from 0 to 30 degrees the changes uh, in the appearance of the carrying angles will taking place and beyond 30 degrees of elbow flexion we can't um, find the carrying angle okay so this is also mainly depends upon uh, the carrying angle mainly depends upon the configuration of the articulating surfaces of the humeral joint so what is going to be happen during this uh, range of motion okay the configuration of the trochlear groove determines so this is the trochlear groove determines 
the configuration of the trochlear groove determines the pathway of the forearm during flexion and extension in the most common configuration of the groove the ulna is guided progressively medially from extension to flexion so from extension to flexion full extension what will happen so this ulna is somewhat deviated laterally isn't it so from full extension to flexion so this ulna is guided progressively towards the medial medial side so and that one is continued in full flexion okay and the forearm comes to rest in the same plane as the humerus so from 0 to 30 degree it is going to adjust um the plane um which is almost uh, related to the humerus after that it is in the same plane of the humerus okay so that is the thing here you can see in the first pick that is a there is a position of forearm in passive flexion it is the most common configuration of the trochlear groove the ulna is guided progressively medially from extension to the flexion so that in full flexion the forearm comes in rest in the same plane of the humerus so here in this pic you can see so the forearm so is both both the bones are present in the same plane of the humerus here okay in extension so in extension the forearm moves laterally until it reaches a position slightly lateral to the axis of the humerus in full extension so here um and also other variations in the direction of the groove will alter the pathway of the forearm so that when the elbow is passively flexed the forearm will come to rest either medial or lateral to the humerus in full flexion so this is uh, happening in the flexion during extension what will happen so already it is present progressively in the medial side during extension this forearm which is uh, placed on the medial side it shifts laterally until it reaches a position slightly lateral to the axis of the humerus in full extension and also some of the variations in the direction of the groove which alter the pathway of the forearm so that when the elbow is passively flexed so in some conditions so if the groove the groove which is um, oriented so here if you can see it is oriented more medially the groove is oriented more medially then when full flexion happens passive flexion of the elbow leads to the forearm somewhat medially and if you can see the orientation of this trochlea somewhat laterally so this causes when passively full flexion of the elbow causes some lateral deviation with that of the uh plane of the humerus okay this is happening here so any alterations in the groove causes such kind of deviations with the normal plane of the humerus that means the configuration of the articulating surfaces of the humero ulnar joint plays a very important role in maintenance of the carrying angle as well as the disappearance of the carrying angle during range of motions and uh, some of the things we have uh, seen earlier that females have larger carrying angles than males 
why in females have larger carrying angles than males so some studies have done that by care who has proposed that the proximal end of the ulna angulates more and the medial flange of the trochlea grows longer in a shorter person than in the taller person so that means the proximal end of the ulna here the proximal end of the ulna angulates more on the medial flange of the trochlea grows longer in short person so this will grow longer in short person than in taller persons so consequently the shorter the forearm bones the greater is the carrying angle so if the sh- sh- uh, forearm bones are short then the carrying angle is more because the average height of women is usually less than that of men so some other investigators measured flexion as well as the carrying angle and found that the flexion angle was a significant factor in carrying angle values okay the mean flexion angle of 5.26 degrees in women was significantly smaller than that of, than that in men indicating that women reach a greater natural physiological extension than men leading to a larger carrying angle okay so because of the average um, height of the women is uh, shorter than the men so because of shorter forearm bones the medial angulation is more in the females when compared to the males and such women will have naturally some physiological extension is more than men which is leading to a greater natural physiological extension so if you see some people who are having more uh, carrying angle they will have more uh, physiological um, a range of extension okay and some other measured some 600 elbows in pediatric population from 4 months to 18 years or found that girls had a larger range of motion in extension than boys and that the increased elbow extension uh, range of motion in girls could account for girls larger carrying angle so the increase in range of motion of elbow extension in girls is due to larger carrying angle so these are all about the carrying angle how this carrying angle is measured how it is formed and um, at which is this uh, carrying angle is increased to maximum after what age it is not increased and when it is called normal and when it is called abnormal in during normal movements also the carrying angle will disappear and this um, carrying angle mainly depends upon the articulation configuration of the humero ulnar joints which mainly causes the disappearance during motion of the elbow joint whether it is in flexion or in extension and why the females have larger carrying angles than males so we have seen all these things in the carrying angles of the elbow in the next session we are going to see the mobility and stability of the elbow joint thank you